now fractions of one of those obstacles which some pupils never manage to cross. So a school that's found a way to teach fractions is worth a visit. At Janvrin School in Jersey, teachers are carrying pupils through to the point of understanding fractions conceptually. Easy, you may think, on an affluent, beautiful island, but a substantial number of children in today's lesson are on the special needs register, and behaviour management is an issue. Also, English for a number of children is an additional language. So, let's meet the team. Louise Isaacs is the Year 3 teacher. Commentating on the lesson, Ian George, mentor for maths teaching, and Richard Dunn, maths consultant. And here's our Year 3 class. Richard and Ian are watching with us and are helping to select the lesson highlights. The children are going to work on whiteboards. Louise is preparing two tables. The blue maths table is nothing special unless you're in year three. For our pupils, it has a special significance. They will use the maths table and the journey from the resources table to visualize calculations or maths stories. They do this by moving cups or cards between the resources table and this special to them maths table. And, and here come the, the paper cups and the, uh, there's a variety, there's whole cups uh, and a variety of fraction cups, there's half cups and quarter cups that they use. Yeah, this is, this, it looks to me brilliant. I mean, you're still maintaining the use of these concrete material objects. So I'm going to write you a math story on the board. I want you to copy down very carefully, making sure that you write your whole numbers a large size. Okay, I'm just going to have a quick whiz round. I'm going to make sure everybody's got that number story written down correctly. But with the whiteboards, the writing's large, you can see exactly what the children have done. And it's very quick to pinpoint where you need to go back to. Or, where, or if everybody's got it wrong, it's very quick to see. You can just say, right, let's do that again. But they've got it all on one line. You have a little check of the person... So it's you. easy to spot that Patrick's having a problem. Louise's response is to make him the demonstrator for the maths story. Right, Patrick, let's have you out. Let's have you out. I reckon you can do this, Patrick. Is there somebody who'd like to read the math story for Patrick as he's showing us what this math story means? Jack. One and a quarter. Are we all watching Patrick? Yep. Yeah. show? Make sure we want to check. Add three whole cups. It's good, isn't it, that um, it seems to be making a lot of difference that they're looking at each aspect of the math story and interpreting some parts as cups and some parts as actions. Take away two and a quarter. Two whole cups and a quarter cup. That was really good that you made that clear. Show everybody, Patrick, before we put it down. I think you get so used when you're in the teaching profession of it has to always be you at the front because you need to control. And I think having sort of made that mistake in the past of assuming that children must certainly learn better from an adult, I think that's completely wrong. The answer is to give him a clap and give Jack a clap. Excellent. Well done. Thank you. It seems to me that probably for the first time I've seen children really appreciating that the equal sign has got a specific meaning. So they really are clear. It means I count yes. on the math table. What's yeah. also a huge benefit is the children are, are constantly encouraged to articulate what they see right. and the actions that they, uh, that they have to do uh, right. so they can explain their learning or demonstrate their learning in a different way. Yes. Gail, you're going to birth. Come and be me. Louise has a, a, a multi-role. Yeah. Uh, she's, she's to model uh, to the children, but she's also to encourage children to, to model to each other yes. uh, and to be able to identify that's a very active role. Mm. Three and three quarters. What are you doing over there, Bruno? How do you know you're going to get some more? It could be take away or it could be add. It, can, it could be all the things. Exactly. Do you want to hover in the middle? There, yeah, it's not hovering. Hmm. All right? Three and three quarters. Take away. 
Uh-huh. Abracadabra. One and a quarter. He's learning. He moved over. Well done, Bruno. What we're anticipating happens uh, and, and will happen in the future is that, that children will imagine this in, in, in their heads. Uh, yes. They'll imagine those actions uh, and those movements in yeah. their heads when yeah. they see the symbols. Yeah. Right, there's our half. Bruno says, and he's spot on, glue them together, we get a lovely half. And he did something with this half. What did you do with this half? Glued it to another half. Yeah, you had a spare half on the table, didn't you? So what happens when you glued all of those fractions together? What did you get? A whole cup. A whole cup. And what did you whisper to go? Four. Four. What do you think about Bruno's answer? They all achieve at their own level and, and they all are involved. There's no reason why anybody can't come out to the front and participate and be me or do the writing on the board or do the cups. They can all do it. And even when they stumble sometimes and they get a little bit wrong, the support is there. The children want to help. Now Louise is moving on to multiplication. They remember this operation by a phrase, love that number. So the children visualize that one and a quarter is loved so much that it will make three journeys in total to the maths table. Is that one and a quarter? Is that the maths table? What you love is on the maths table, isn't it? You love one and a quarter. Right, Lauren, I want you to write down that he loves one and a quarter. Show me the sign that says he loves it. Diana, what does that sign mean? Do you remember? Do you know what this sign means over here, Diana? Times. It is times. Well done. Lauren, I'd like Jay to love that number three times. Good. How many times have you been so far, Jay? Twice. Twice. Excellent. How many times left to go? Once. One more. Okay. Jay, can you count them for me, please? Good. I am really impressed. As I'm talking, everybody else is getting on with writing this math story. When you've written this math story, watch what Jay is doing. With this type of approach, everybody can hang their hat on some sort of hook, and it doesn't matter how they view those cups, it's a very vivid memory that allows them to sort of move on to the next part of the lesson, even if it's not that day, it could be later that week or even later that term. Next, representing fractions with cards. But first, is there evidence that the teaching method is working? Well, I'm in the business of trying to raise standards, obviously, and I found that mathematics has been very resistant to the standards being raised. So given that, we've been looking at other styles uh, of techniques, and we're finding that this particular style here has been working really well. With trials with year two, I've been amazed at uh, how the children have enjoyed it, and conceptually, how far they've been developing the mass, far beyond where I would expect them to be. So given that, I'm involving other teachers and trying it in year three, and very positive. I think it's uh, something we may adopt within the whole school. We're going to use something that isn't cups, but it represents cups. So we have to imagine that we're using the cups this time, although they don't look like cups. But I need somebody who's feeling particularly brave to come and show us this math story using the fraction cards. Oh, oh come on then, Patrick, out you come. It's still a concrete representation, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's relying more on their symbolic knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, but children are making that, uh, bridging that gap now. Off we go, Andrew. Two and three quarters. Put the cards, when you think you're ready, Patrick, in the card rack on the maths table. Are you watching carefully? And are you happy? Yes. Right, we'll carry on then. Two and three quarters. Take away. Fantastic, Patrick. A quarter. What are you doing at the moment, Patrick? This is fascinating. What are you, what are you the doing? clarity with which Louise is moving from the concrete halves and quarters into the more symbolic representation of halves and quarters. Uh, yeah. That's a hard concept, but mm. uh, uh, they're getting there. Do you yes. think you can do it? 
Get your answers down. Gemma's doing a fab job. What have you done so far, Gemma? I put the two over here. The two what? The two whole cups over here. Excellent. Now what? You've got a lot of, lot of cards up there, haven't you? Mm -hmm. What's she going to do with all those cards? She's going to. Oh, she's going to play snap. Not going to play snap with them, are you? No. Yeah, no, because you win because they all match, don't they? Do yeah. they all match? Yeah. They do, don't they? What are you going to do with yeah. all of those then? You have to glue them together and try and make a whole cup like this one. With these can be a whole cup. It's got four. So. The power of the visualization of the cups is still apparent. Even though Gemma's using cards, she's thinking cups. This is significant as the children progress towards the abstract. And then there's um, a half cup left. But that's not a half. The, when you stick them together, they, they, they're a half. So when you stick which fractions together? The, uh, What's that fraction? A quarter and another quarter because it makes a half. So Gemma's saying, stick these two quarters together, I get a half. And she's done something really clever, Jada, hasn't she? What's she done with those four quarters? And she's glued them together so that makes a whole cup as well. Excellent, Gemma. So how many whole cups have we got at the moment? We've got... One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three mm. whole cups. And a half. Three I whole think the cups. way that we th th present it, where we give them to start with concrete and hands-on kinesthetic type activities, it, 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 ca it catches the ones that you're going to lose very early. And because they enjoy that element of it, they want to keep enjoying that, ele that, that, that kind of feeling. So they, they want to stay engaged in the lesson. We've done it with the cups. We've done it with the cards. Now we're going to do it with this. This is brave. This is, seems to be a big step. We are not using anything now, just your imagination and your wonderful brains. You're not going to have any cups. They are going to become pictures in your mind. I think most people teaching fractions actually start from this stage. Yep. This very difficult yep. um, uh, use of just abstractions. Go on then, Liliana. One. Here it goes. Add. Two and a half. Take away a half equals. Okay. Can you count them? I know the answer. So what's the answer, Luca? Three cups. That's fantastic. Well done, Luca. Excellent. It is three cups. Super. It's clear most of these children can calculate abstract fractions only one term into key stage two. What is really, uh, really good about this, I mean, for one thing, throughout this lesson, I think we've been able to see the children actually learning. Yes. And the learning we've seen also sets them up for dealing with other numbers, because the same actions yeah. will apply throughout. This has been magnificent. The magic moment is when you see a child saying to you, I can do that. And they are so convinced they can do it, because they've, they're so confident in their ability because their, f their self esteem is raised that even if they get it wrong they're not beaten down by it because it it's strong enough to hold them up for another go. The method is overcoming many barriers to learning and has been used with almost every age group. Teachers TV will be back at Janbrin to examine the rationale behind the technique and the way it can be applied to a complete range of mathematical conception.